بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We're still studying the biography of one of the greatest companions of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام a man who has the right to be proud of being the cousin of the Prophet the son-in-law of the Prophet a man who has all the right to be the nephew of Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib the Lion of Allah and to be the brother of the martyr Ja'far ibn Abi Talib who is known as Ja'far al-Tayyar whom Allah gave him two wings to fly in paradise with the angels. A man who has all the right to be proud of being the father of two of the masses of the youth in paradise. And they are Al Hassan and Al Hussein. May Allah be pleased with them all. We're studying the biography of Ali ibn Abi Talib. May Allah be pleased with him. Ali was very knowledgeable and he used to be considered among the scholars of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. They used to go to him and seek his guidance and seek his advice in whatever problems that may occur. Umar himself, may Allah be pleased with him, used to go and consult him. And he would always say, Ali is the man. And he got him out of so many problems that Umar could not find a solution for. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, used to send to Ali whenever there were cases so that Ali would judge these cases and he would solve the dispute among those who were disputing. That was because the Prophet wasallam, when he praised and complimented the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, he said that Abu Bakr is the most merciful to my nation, to my ummah. Umar is the toughest in Allah's religion. Uthman is the most bashful. And Ali is the best to judge. So the best one to judge a disputed issue is Ali ibn Abi Talib. May Allah be pleased with him. Ali and the companions of the Prophet ﷺ followed only the instructions of the Prophet ﷺ, followed only the sunnah and would not follow their whims and desires. They would not follow what we call nowadays logic. Unfortunately, there are lots of so-called Muslims who refuse to submit their will to Allah and decide that whatever is logical to me I would follow and if it's not logical even if it's from the Quran or from the Sunnah I'll reject it I will not accept it and these so-called Muslims call themselves to be educated men of intellect and on the contrary they have nothing to relate to intellect because they refuse to follow the Sunnah unless it matches their rotten minds and thoughts. And this is exactly the methodology that Satan followed, which resulted in him entering hellfire for eternity. When Allah Azza wa Jal instructed everyone to prostrate to Adam, when he created Adam, peace be upon him, the only one who refused to do this was Satan. And when Allah Azza wa Jal questioned him and asked him, why did you not prostrate to what I have created with my own two hands? Satan said, I am better than him. 
I was created from fire and he was created from clay. So logically speaking, I am better. So how do you want me to comply with your instruction and prostrate to this? And that is why he was doomed in hell forever. Similarly, a lot of those who claim to be Muslims reject the Quran, reject the Sunnah because it is not logical to them. Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, set the example to us as Muslims. And he said, by Allah, if religion was by logic, then we would have wiped the bottom of our shoes and socks instead of wiping on top of it. Because this is where the dirt is. But this is the sunnah. Whenever you wants to wipe over the socks or the shoes, this is in performing ablution or performing wudu, he has only to wipe over the top. Not every single bit of it, but he just passes his hands over the socks or over the shoes. This is the sunnah. And this shows us how the companions of the Prophet ﷺ followed the sunnah to the letter. No objections, no questions asked. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said. This is what we will comply with. A man comes to the Prophet ﷺ, one of his companions, with a golden ring in his finger. The Prophet ﷺ angrily takes the golden ring and throws it on the ground and says, why does one of you go to a fiery stone, a stone of fire, and puts it in his hand? And the Prophet leaves, والسلام, His companions say, go and take your ring, give it to one of your female relatives, your wife, your sister, or sell it and make use of the money. The companion says, by Allah, I will not take something that the Prophet والسلام, threw on the ground. This is compliance. This is obedience, not what we find among so-called Muslims nowadays who reject the Quran and who reject the Sunnah. Those, as mentioned earlier, there are people who love Ali ibn Abi Talib and they are among the Sunnah followers, Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. They love him. They respect him and they pray to Allah that he would join us with him in paradise. But on the two extremes, there are people who praised him above his status and gave him attributes that could only be to Allah the Almighty. And some of them even went further to say that when the ark angel, Gabriel, peace be upon him, came with the message from Allah, came with the revelation, he was misguided. And instead of giving it to Ali, he gave it to the Prophet ﷺ. He did a mistake. He made a mistake. Of course, this is nonsense. And whoever says this is not a Muslim. He's a kafir. Because he's doubting Allah's judgment and he is accusing Allah of not knowing who to reveal to and to continue in this mistake for 23 years? Is this a Muslim? Definitely not. He is one of the grandchildren of Abdullah ibn Saba, the Jew, the one who caused all these calamities and sparked all these problems to Uthman and afterwards to Ali. May Allah be pleased with them both. And how is that? This is inshallah what we will know after the break. So stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Those who go to extremes in loving Ali ibn Abi Talib, they usually say and call Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, by the name of Al Imam. And instead of saying, may Allah be pleased with him, they say, Al Imam karram Allahu wajha, may Allah honor his face. And unfortunately, some of the people from Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah fell into this mistake and trap and they themselves started calling Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, by 
Al-Imam Karam Allah Wajha. What is Karam Allah Wajha? May Allah honor his face. They said that this is because he never prostrated to an idol before, unlike the other companions. And this is a grave mistake. Either you call all those who came before him from the righteous, guided rulers, caliphs of Islam, either you call them all imams, and you would say also, Karam Allahu Wajhahum, which is unadvisable. They are all leaders, yes. They are all imma, imams, yes. This is without any doubt. But the terminology, Karam Allahu Wajha, may Allah honor his face, is an innovated one. Allah, when he mentioned the companions of the Prophet, he mentioned them in the Quran and said, Allah was pleased with them. So, when we mention the name of Ali, we say, may Allah be pleased with him. Not, may Allah honor him or, or honor his face, because this is innovated. So this is one of the mistakes that those who went into extreme with our beloved companion Ali, they use these terminologies and they use this so that it would pave the way for them to say even more and more things. Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, of course married the daughter of the Prophet ﷺ, the daughter of his cousin, Fatima bint Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with her. And it was said that it was a revelation from Allah because when the Prophet ﷺ went to Medina, lots of the companions came and proposed to Fatima of course through her father the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet would not accept any of them until Ali was instructed and advised by some of his companions you're unmarried why don't you propose to Fatima and he did and the Prophet ﷺ accepted so it was said that it was a revelation from Allah that Ali will only marry Fatima and he loved Fatima a lot but being who he is, he thought of marrying another one. And this is an Islamic tradition. It was practiced by the Prophet ﷺ and all of the companions, almost all of the companions. Polygamy, marrying another wife, a third wife, up to four wives, was and it still is a necessity of life because we have more women than men. And if you do the math, the surplus of women will only practice their nature of beautifying themselves and looking for a partner or a spouse. Well, Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, thought of, and it was a rumor that Ali will marry. And who was he going to marry? He was going to marry the daughter of Amr ibn Hisham. And who is Amr ibn Hisham? He is Abu Jahl, the number one enemy of Islam, who was killed in the Battle of Badr. Of course, his daughter was a Muslim. So this was the rumor. And when the Prophet ﷺ heard this rumor, he gave a speech on the pulpit and he praised Allah, and then said that I have given my daughters to men who have honored them, such as Abu al-As ibn al-Rabi'ah. He is from Bani Umayyah. So I gave him my daughter and he has fulfilled. And he was kind and he was a gentleman. And I've heard that my cousin is thinking of remarrying. And by Allah, this is the Prophet ﷺ saying this. And by Allah, this would not happen that the daughter of the Messenger of Allah and the daughter of the enemy of Allah would come under one man, and that is Ali ibn Abi Talib. Some women, where most of the women, took this hadith, which is in the Sahih. It's extremely authentic. There's no doubt about that. But they took this hadith and said to their husbands and to their relatives who were thinking of remarrying, 
they said, look at the Prophet ﷺ. He objected to someone marrying a second wife over his daughter. So we can't be more Roman than the Romans. If we reject this, if we object to this, we're just following the Sunnah. And this is not right. You have to finish the whole hadith. The Prophet in his speech وسلم, said, By Allah, I do not make something that is permissible, forbidden. And I do not make something that is forbidden, permissible. Meaning that it is lawful, it is permissible for Ali to marry two, three or four wives. He is not making this forbidden. But, the Prophet وسلم, goes on to justify. He says, but Fatima is part of me. And whatever harms Fatima harms me. And that is why if Ali wants to remarry, let him set Fatima free. Let him divorce her and remarry again. Because if he remarries while he's married to Fatima, by hurting Fatima with this, he will be hurting me. And hurting the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam nullifies Islam. And that is why the Prophet wanted to protect Ali's Islam from being void and nullified. And that is why he said, I do not make something permissible forbidden. I would not change things that are permissible into forbidden things. But he wants to remarry. He may do so, but he knows what to do. And that is to leave Fatima. Of course, Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, would never do such a thing. So he changed his mind and he did not marry until Fatima, may Allah be pleased with her, died. Ali ibn Abi Talib, from Fatima, we know that he had Al-Hasan and al Hussein, And the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, they are the top, the leaders, the masses of the youth in paradise. May Allah be pleased with them all. al Hussein was martyred by the people of Iraq and by the army sent to fight him. And whoever killed him is among the worst enemies of Islam because he killed the love of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, al Hussein, may Allah be pleased with him. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, had from Fatima also Zainab bint Ali who was married to Abdullah ibn Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. She was married to her cousin. And they also, the couple, Ali and Fatima, may Allah be pleased with them, they also had a second daughter, and this was Umm Kalthum. And Umm Kalthum was very young. When Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, proposed to Ali and asked her hand in marriage. So Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said, she's your niece in the sense that I'm your brother and she's my daughter and she's very young for you. And he said, Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, I'm not looking for marriage as such. I'm looking for a connection by lineage to the Prophet ﷺ. So by marrying the granddaughter of the Prophet ﷺ, then I would be related to him. The Prophet is married to my daughter, and now I'd like to marry his granddaughter. And she was like 11, 12 years old, maybe a bit less, a bit more. And he agreed to that, and Ali gave his daughter Umm Kalthum in marriage to Umar ibn al-Khattab. And this causes a big problem to those who talk negatively about Ali and Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. These deviant sects who claim to be Muslim and insult Abu Bakr, Umar and Uthman, insult Aisha and the majority of the companions and accusing them of being apostates except six or seven of the companions, they themselves are not Muslims. When they claim to love Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, and say that he was a fierce warrior, and he was a brave man, and he was so and so, and he was. By Allah, he definitely was. But then they accuse Umar 
may Allah be pleased with him, of cheating Ali, of betraying him, of assuming the Khilafah instead of giving it to him. They say all of these lies against Umar. And all of these are lies. When they come to this fact that Umar married Umm Kalthum, the daughter of Ali, and Ali gave his daughter in marriage to this so-called enemy of Islam, the traitor, the one who betrayed us, the one who took and deprived us from what is lawfully ours. When they say that Ali did this, it's either one of two. Either Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, was one of the biggest cowards in Islam. Because no normal Muslim would agree to this. In giving his daughter in marriage to an enemy, this is cowardice. This is the greatest signs of a coward. And Ali was not a coward. So it's either this or whatever they say is a big false and a big lie and this is the right thing by claiming that Ali had problems with Umar and he accused Umar of betraying and of lying and of deceiving and depriving him from what was lawfully his and that is ruling the Muslims by accusing Ali with this they're accusing him of being a coward which is not Ali may Allah be pleased with him acknowledged the fact that Abu Bakr was the best among the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Then Umar, then Uthman. This was reported by Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiya, that is the son of Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, from one of the slave women he had. His name is Muhammad, Muhammad ibn Ali. And they call him Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiya because his mother was from Bani Hanifa. So he asked his father, who is the best among the companions of the Prophet ﷺ? He said, Abu Bakr. Ali is saying this. He said, then who? He said, Umar. And then said, who? He said, Uthman. Which means that Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, acknowledge this fact which those deviant sects are trying to conceive, are trying to hide, and trying to deceive people and cheat them into considering Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman to be enemies of Alul Bayt, to be enemies of Ali and the descendants of the house of the Prophet And this is a great fabrication. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, would never give his daughter to a bad Muslim, let alone to an infidel, as they say. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. He and Abu Bakr are the masters, are the leaders, are the top, people in paradise of the old generation while Hassan and Hussein are the same to the youth so Abu Bakr and Umar were the best of the Ummah and this was acknowledged by Ali may Allah be pleased with him and whoever says otherwise is not to be considered a Muslim this is all the time we have for today's program so until we meet next time fi amanillah wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh